Hey there, crypto heads. It's your boy, Crypto Trap, saying thank you for swinging by the channel. Your new home for expert analysis and amateur nutshell. This is not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence. I decided to originally release the video over the ISO 20022 new financial system that's coming, guys. And I had a couple people write into me and ask me if I could do a more condensed version that wasn't so long, that just based on the cryptos involved as opposed to the full companies that are part of the full blueprint here. And I thought it'd be a good idea to do that because it'd make it easier for people to understand exactly what cryptos are involved and the opportunities they present right now with the pricing that they're at uh, for future investing. So that being said, let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's jump right into this breakdown. It's about 15, 16 minutes long, and I hope you enjoy. So uh, we have, uh, let's say, you know, five different cryptos in here. We have IOTA, Ripple, Stellar, Zenfen, and Algorand, which I'm going to explain in further detail. Just know that these ones in orange are your uh, cryptocurrencies. Essentially, these big companies are going to be using these cryptocurrencies that I mentioned, IOTA, Ripple, Stellar, Zenfen, and Algorand, uh, to help make the businesses that, you know, reside inside of Accenture, R3, uh, and Swift, so that they can actually uh, move into this new system called ISO. Before we can explain how that all works, we need to understand what ISO 222 is. Uh, so as you can see, uh, ISO 222 is a protocol that um, will be used for uh, you know financial in institutions to make payment transactions and stuff like that. Right? The use of ISO 222 for cross-border payments and cash reporting will be phased in, a, in under the new approach at the end of 2022. A finalization of this entire system, you know, everybody switching over to the system. Uh, in five years, meaning 2025. There's already 70 countries that are using ISO uh, 222. Let's jump over to IOTA first. Here's IOTA. So opening data for smarter communities. Um, this is their page uh, that is in regards to smart cities, uh, internet of things, changing urban living. Well, let's see, what is a smart city? A smart city is an urban area that incorporates information and communication technologies into its systems. Sensors gather data to inform authorities and residents, reducing waste and making resource consumption more efficient. So it's all about efficiency. Uh, Internet of Things is rapidly changing urban living. Uh, so as the Internet of Things changes the way citizens, communities, cities, and nations connect, interact, and exchange data. From data privacy and ownership uh, to peer-to-peer uh, -peer energy and integrated transportation, from predictive maintenance and additive manufacturing to e-health and e-governance. It's like I'm speaking a completely different language at this point. But uh, uh, yeah, essentially, you know, that's what IOTA is here for, um, helping to uh, create solutions and helping to build smart cities through Internet of Thing technology. Uh, we can jump over to the actual homepage. It does a lot more than just that. Uh, again, it's a cryptocurrency that if you were so inclined, if you wanted to, you can uh, buy some of this. I think at its current price, it's under $1.50. So um, it's going down, it's going down. So we, you know, for mobility, for social impacts, smart cities, uh, global trade. And now here's a funny one right here, digital identity. That's interesting, right? Uh, so let's jump over to digital ident identity real, real fast. I actually haven't taken a look at this page, but you know, just digital identity, right? Uh, providing trust between individuals, organizations, and things. So it's kind of like on that uh, internet of things back on that level again. Just interesting and <laughs> wild stuff like that. Uh, that's what all this is gonna be. So yeah, look right here, that's exactly what I said. So, Address validation, customers can prove where they live for shipping and billing addresses. That's pretty cool, I guess. Age verification, customers can prove their 18 for online purchases. Um, authority login, customers can prove who they are and gain access to their account without passwords. Okay, so throw your passwords out the window. We don't need them anymore. We have IOTA, uh, cool. Taking a look at IOTA from a technical standpoint, you'll see that we have IOTA box trap, at about the 87 cent mark a 212.7 percent potential for profit back to its all-time high
So let's talk Zenfen. So here we go. We have uh, Zenfen. Enterprise-ready hybrid blockchain for global trade and finance, combining the power of public and private blockchains with interoperable smart contracts. This is a decentralized hybrid interoperable and liquid network uh, exchange infinite Zenfen is a delicated proof of stake consensus network uh, enabling hybrid relay bridges, instant block finality and op interoperability pardon me, with ISO 222 messaging standards making Zenfen's hybrid architecture developer friendly. Now this is also what's pretty interesting about Zenfen is its transaction uh, speeds, its fees and um, energy you know, consumption or usage compared to some of the first and second generation tools that are out there. Also, um, its abilities because it has um, added functionalities like, uh, you know, smart contracts. So we have uh, Bitcoin at uh, three transactions per second. That's a TPS, uh, three to six, average fee of $15, transaction confirmations uh, in 10 to 60 minutes which is a lot faster than, you know, when you're sending, you know, let's say millions of dollars from one account to the other, you know, there's a lot of time that, that, you know, the Swift system used to take and, you know, Bitcoin makes it a lot faster. But in this new world where we have, you know, debt like this and we need liquidity and stuff like that, that's still, in my opinion, not, you know, not fast enough. Uh, let's jump back. Where are we with the Zen fan? Here. Okay. Uh, so I'm not gonna knock Bitcoin or anything like that. Um, well, not in this video. <laughs> it has flaws. It's okay. You know, uh, I like some other uh, cryptocurrencies better, personally. Right? Okay. Um, average fee, uh, fifteen bucks. Uh, transaction confirmation, ten to sixty minutes, as we discussed. No smart contracts, and then it takes a lot of energy, as you can see. Um, something I'll mention is like with Bitcoin, it wouldn't be able to be used in this ecosystem, which is why it's not here, because of how slow it is in comparison to the XCC. So, you know, with uh, 2000 plus transaction, uh, you know, transaction per second, that's a lot faster than three or six, uh, with the average fee of causing, uh, of costing, pardon me, uh, what is that, a, a thousandth of a, of a penny? something like that i don't know ten ten thousandth of a penny i think that might be uh that's super low obviously um and with transaction times being as fast as you know your normal credit card or debit card or even cash that's pretty fast it has the ability to support smart contracts and it takes virtually uh, no energy let's move over to other areas of, of zimfen that i think are interesting and you should got you guys should know about so as we saw on the other uh, page, it's a hybrid blockchain. I'm not really going to get into that because we already kind of covered that. Uh, it has uh, these other features that are interesting. Trade Finex, uh, which is uh, Zimpen's global marketplace platform for peer-to-peer -peer trade and financing, uh, which en enables buyers and sellers and financiers to find more efficient ways to trade together. Uh, so that's that's great. Uh, anyone holding XCC tokens uh, can become a financier on the Trade Finex platform. So if you're holding, that's a good thing. Um, not financial advice. Um, let's see, we, we have e-wallet. So uh, Zinfant e-wallet enables real-time global payments. That could be very useful. XDC slash XDCE tokens. Zinfant's digital contract um, is the native token that powers the Zinfant network and enables real-time trade and financing. Uh, total supply was set at 37.5 billion on uh, June 1st. 2019. Uh, that's when the new mainnet started. Validator master nodes below are minting new tokens to the tune of um, 83 million per year. Another 25 million will come out of the pre mined pool, 37.5 billion. However, 20% of the XCC processing fees will be burned. Uh, so, uh, burning is a good thing if you like, uh, a, you know, deflationary models such as uh, Haber's KNY token, or at least as it reads here. So um, that's kind of a, a positive thing, although it, also, it is all pre-mined and they're going to be adding more, uh, they will be um, burning some of those fees, the ones that come, you know, the amount of uh, tokens that come as fees, uh, they'll be burning those, so it's somewhat deflationary. 
It also has smart contracts and um, yeah, some other stuff over here. So uh, definitely wanted to mention that, uh, you know, Zenfin because it's part of this uh, Swift and ISO network and it's, it's cost is relatively low as of the filming of this video. I believe it's um, under six cents. You know, that's, that's nothing. I'm really literally talking pennies here. So uh, just something to think about. Taking a look at XDC from a technical standpoint, you can see we have a box trap here. At the five cent mark, a 230% potential for profit back to its all time high. Now we're going to go ahead and cover IBM's. Um, Stablecoin, which is actually created by Stellar. IBM has partnered with Stellar as a blockchain that shares technology with Ripple and Stronghold, a startup to launch USD Anchor. And uh, essentially, there you go. IBM and Stellar are basically married. <laughs> Let's take a look at Stellar from a technical standpoint. As you can see, we have a box trapped here at the 21 cent mark which gives it a 274.66% potential for profit back to its all-time high. Let's just go ahead and jump over to our next little area where we have Algorand. So um, here's Algorand's actual website. Algorand builds technology that accelerates the convergence between decentralized and traditional finance by enabling the simple creation of next generation financial products, protocols, and exchange of value. Uh, well, I'm confused. I'm joking, but <laughs> but seriously, like uh, it, it's very heady and technical stuff um, at first, but then you start to understand and understand the lingo, lingo and you'll get it over time. Uh, just you know, keep with it. Keep keep studying on your own, doing your own due diligence. Uh, create and deploy uh, tokens, NFT, stablecoin, securities, and currencies. Simple and cost-effective uh, uh, payment infrastructure. Um, create new financial tools, protocols, and services. So um, basically, they're calling it FutureFi, interoperability, private and public models, uh, layer two smart contracts. Just amazing stuff now this guy right here Silvio Macaulay this guy is like certified genius this guy's smart um, he he solved some uh, really crazy uh, issue uh, I think it's called the trilemma blockchain trilemma um, and uh, yeah he won something called the Alan Turing award uh, you know it was kind of like a joint win with another person uh, but basically the Alan Turing award award is like one for like uh, cryptography and mathematics. Uh, this guy was a previous, you know, previous to starting Algorand. Um, he was a professor at MIT, the same MIT that created the internet. So, uh, you know, this guy's no slouch. He's keeping busy. Um, and I, I seen an interview uh, where he was with uh, Lex Friedman. Uh, Lex Friedman has a podcast. Uh, Silvio McCauley was on it. I would highly recommend you guys check that one out. It's, he seems like a pretty cool guy, like very smart and stuff like that. And um, you know, I'm not going to try to ass kiss this guy or anything like that, but he's a unique human being. I will say that. Um, you got to check out the Lex Freeman uh, podcast. You'll, you'll learn a lot more uh, from that uh, just with that interview. If you want to, if you're interested in Algorand specifically. Ecosystem of applications. This, this is just an immense amount of just different applications. Uh, Algorand wallet, user-friendly wallet uh, for, for anyone, for, pardon me, user-friendly way for anyone to interact with the public network as an ecosystem foundation. Um, I mean, who wants to create a wallet for our, our money and our identities to be on it as well too. So uh, really, really huge plans um, in place there. That's Algorand. Taking a look at Algo from a technical standpoint, you can see that we have a box trapped here at the 92 cent mark, which gives us a 
204.84% potential for profit back to its all-time high. So here we are at Ripple. As we can see, efficiently move uh, money to all corners of the world. Discover why hundreds of financial institutions choose RippleNet to provide a better payments experience and enable greater economic opportunity for everyone everywhere. Um, these are some of the partners it has. Again, Standard Charter, I mentioned them earlier, SBI, American Express, um, Bank of America. I don't know if you caught that. Let's, let's just go to the customers real fast. We'll jump back to the main. But here we are, Bank of America, SBI. You know, the usual suspects are here. American Express. Uh, you know, it's just it's just wild and crazy. Um, which, what the heck? Why do they have to do that? Let's re reload it so we can take a look at it again. Tranglo. Um, Santander Bank, just just a bunch of partners, a lot of banks, you know, involved. And look how clean and sleek their website. Yes, they might be going through a little bit of an issue with the SEC over regulatory clarity, but um, I think, you know, I think they're gonna win. You know, it's looking, things are looking in their favor. So, you know, I think uh, the, the lawsuit couldn't be a better thing for them because it's going to give, give them the clarity that they need so that all of these other uh, partners inside of their um, their program here, their, you know, some of their customers and stuff like that can really get cracking and that they can start earning more of the customers that they need to really launch things uh, into the stratosphere. Here's some of the uh, kind of key insights of what Ripple uh, does. It's a decentralized infrastructure, three second to send a payment modernized messaging messaging pardon me 100 transparency and uh apparency pardon me liquid liquidity solutions zero in pre-funding so it's it's going to be a major uh, mover in this whole ecosystem and uh a, a huge tool uh inside of this you know huge gear let me just say that a huge gear in this system and that's ripple uh, interledger protocol xrp directly so this one's going directly whereas a lot of them have like kind of like these intermediaries you know you know quorum zinfin boom it's ripple interledger protocol that's its own system into corda iso 222 and taking a look at xrp we do have a box trapped here at about the 82 cents mark which will give us a One hundred thirty-two point three one percent potential for profit, back to its most recent all-time high. We're in need of a new system. Uh, this is pretty much it. This this should let you know at some point we need to fix things, and um, this right here is their solution. So that's what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the condensed breakdown, condensed version of the ISO twenty o two two. Uh, the new financial system video uh, but if you like the video guys please like subscribe hit the bell help us build the channel so we can do live breakdowns live uh live technical analysis uh for you in the chat rooms and stuff like that and until then and at that point in time we'll catch you in the next trap